Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Clean Jobs and HVAC. Hello everyone, my name is Tim. Welcome to HVAC Clean Jobs. Today we're going to be talking about a rotary chiller. This particular chiller is an R-series train chiller. So let's take a look at the diagram. So, in this particular case, it's a rotary chiller. So we have the compressor section. Discharge gases, depending on what size I have, are going to go through an oil recovery process or an oil separator. Out of the oil separator, it's going to go into the condenser where we're going to run water through the condenser, cool off that refrigerant. It's going to come out of the condenser into the top of the evaporator through an EXP. This is going to be a falling film evaporator. We'll talk about that later. Gonna, the refrigerant is going to fall down in a falling film onto the tubes absorb uh, heat from the water that's going out to the facility air handlers. That gas is going to come back, that is now vaporized, back into the compressor. We have an oil circuit here that some of the oil leaves the compressor. It's going to go into an oil recovery system, back to an oil cooler if you had it, and back into the compressor. If we look down in the bottom here, This is called a gas pump, okay? This gas pump has a single purpose, to recover oil from the bottom of the evaporator. So what happens is we have a line here. It allows both refrigerant and oil to come in here. Goes in here and then we can pressurize this, push it back, that oil back up to the compressor, okay? Then we'll energize another solenoid that hooks into the evaporator will pull a vacuum on this or a less pressure. Okay, it'll suck more of the oil and refrigerant in there. Then we will energize another solenoid and take it straight, which we'll see later, straight up to the compressor again. So we have basically two solenoids: one that opens up to the low side, so that we suck in. Uh, low pressure refrigerant and oil from the evaporator and then once it's filled we'll energize another solenoid which will pressurize the chamber itself. We have a check valve in here to prevent oil and refrigerant from going back the other way. Pressurize this and push it back up into the compressor and that's my oil recovery for this particular chiller. Now if I take a look the compressor itself. Let's take a close look here. So we have a male and female rotor that are going to spin. This is the compressor section. We have a slide valve here which is used for loading and unloading this compressor. The slide valve will push forward and increase the capacity of this um, compressor or go back and reduce the capacity of this uh, compressor. So this is called a slide valve. Now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the back side of this compressor. The uh, R-series chiller uses an uh, electronic expansion valve, what we can see here. So the, the liquid refrigerant from the condenser is going to come through here, and this is going to actually modulate the amount of refrigerant that's in the evaporator. It's a falling film evaporator, so it's kind of like being in a shower. It's just raining inside that evaporator. And in the bottom of the evaporator, it's a small level of refrigerant. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. But this valve controls that level in the bottom of the evaporator. This is the slide valve right here. Inside of this container is a slide valve that gets pushed to either load or unload the machine via these solenoids. So we have a load solenoid and an unload solenoid 
which will energize and pressurize it to either push the, push the slide valve in or release it to bring it back out. That is the unloading process. Now let's take a look at the, uh, uh, the float control or the control for the liquid level in the evaporator. This is the liquid level sensor. As you can see, the way it's mounted, one line goes in the bottom of the evaporator, one line goes north toward the top. Well, the refrigerator will come in here and seek its own level to indicate the level of the refrigerant that's in the evaporator. We have a sensor here, it's called a smart sensor, also called a lid low level intelligent device that this is connected to. Now when I pull this, let's pull this all apart, there's two different ways to do this. One is actually a little float like this. So as the refrigerant level goes up, so does the float. And it'll control that expansion device to maintain a mid position for that refrigerant level for the float. So we have our smart sensor here that's feeding back into the microcontroller telling it exactly how much refrigerant is in that evaporator. If there's not enough, it will open the expansion valve. If there's not too little, it will close it down. This is another style. This is a newer style. It's a net liquid level sensor. As you can see, it's got little ports in here. And what it'll actually do is sense the refrigerant level. And the problems we have with the old one is they would bounce around with as uh, oil and refrigerant would start to separate from each other. So now we have a newer one that looks like this. Still has built-in smart sensor. So this one has the smart sensor already all built in. But this is the other type of sensor that you would find on this train R series chiller. Okay. Looking at this chiller from the back side, we can see this is the discharge line. Discharge is going to come through here. It's going to be filled with oil. This is our oil separator. After it leaves the oil separator, it's going to come down through here and go into the condenser. Now this piece in the back here, this is my oil sump. It has a special sensor in here to sense what that oil level is. Also has an oil heater to keep that oil warm for that compressor. Okay. Now once it goes into the condensing unit, it's going to go from a hot gas to a liquid. We're going to have a line down below. So we're going to be coming from the bottom of the condenser through here, and now this line is actually going to be going up to the top of the evaporator through the expansion valve that we saw earlier. So now it's going into the evaporator. Once it's in the evaporator, let's walk over here. We're going to be coming off from the evaporator and back into the compressor. If you look at our oil separator, we've got the oil will come off the bottom of that oil separator and go back into the oil sump. That, in a nutshell, is how this rotary R chiller refrigerant cycle functions. We will talk more about this, we'll talk more about the controls, we'll talk more about why delta starters in a later episode. Hope this has helped. This is Tim. Out. Hey everyone, thanks for hanging around. Now remember, always use this right safety equipment for the job. Until next time, this is Tim.